At first light that morning, thousands of men began to land in five beaches along the French coast. The beaches were codenamed Utah, Omaha, Gold, Sword, and Juno. On D-Day, the Canadian forces stormed Juno, a three-mile Norman shoreline between the towns of Corsales and saint -Uvan. From the sea, the Canadian Navy battered the Nazi defenses, and from the air, the Royal Canadian Air Force pounded the resisting Wehrmacht divisions. From airfields in British soil, the fighters of Squadron 443 crossed the channel and strafed the enemy positions. One of those Spitfires, identified with the numeral 21SMK607, was in charge of Flying Officer Luis Perez Gomez, a 20-year-old scion of a traditional family from Guadalajara, the beautiful capital of Jalisco, a Mexican state on the Pacific coast. How did this Mexican boy come to be a Royal Canadian Air Force pilot in the colossal campaign we know as Operation Overlord? This is a story I aim to tell in Mexican Eagle, Canadian Wings. Luis Perez Gomez was shot down by the Luftwaffe over Cannes in the evening of June 16, 1944. That is 10 days after D-Day. His Spitfire crashed in the fields near the small town of Sassi. Some villagers went to the plane, and pulled his body from the wreck, and took it to their local cemetery in the Catholic Church in the center of town. They, they buried the remains of Luis and had the precaution to inscribe a French name in the grave to protect it from the retreating Germans or perhaps from some Gestapo officers in search of information. This is a fascinating story. Luis had dreamed with being a pilot since he was a small child. In his teens, when the Nazi menace was threatening the world, he heard the call of duty and decided to enlist. But he was turned down by the Mexican Air Service. He went to the United States and tried to join the Air Force, but there he was detained and sent back to Mexico. Undeterred, he traveled to the Canadian capital and enrolled in the Ottawa Technical High School. Shortly after, he was accepted in the air training program and eventually earned his wings of the Royal Canadian Air Force. You will agree with me when I say that Luis was no ordinary teenager. When he left Mexico for Canada on a long and difficult trip, his English was very poor, he barely had any money, he traveled alone, and there was no one waiting for him in that foreign land. Luis succeeded in making his dreams come true because of sheer grit and determination. He was a bright student, without doubt, and his instructors at the flying school coincided that he was a perfect candidate for a fighter pilot. While in Ottawa, as I've said before, in the Ottawa Technical High School, he lived in the Gleb. And living in the Gleb, one day, he was invited to a community gathering. And there, in that gathering, that party, he met a 16-year-old beauty named Dorothy O'Brien. Luis and Dorothy fell in love and became inseparable. They had precious little time. They were together on New Year's Eve 1944 at the Canadian Grill in the Chateau Laurier. Some weeks later, he was sent overseas to England, to France, and to his death. But Dorothy never forgot the beautiful Mexican boy she had fallen in love with. The sequel to this story is tender and fascinating. Almost 60 years later, Dorothy and her husband, Commander Dennis Pratt, a retired Canadian naval officer, went to Sassi and visited the site where Luis is buried. In Sassi, 
The townspeople have not forgotten Luis. He is known as La Vieture Mexicaine, and his memory is cherished with the graciousness that Normans have for the Canadian liberators. Thanks to Dorothy's loving endeavor, the town square was afterwards named after the Mexican pilot, Plas Perez Gomez. Sometime afterwards, uh, by now a widow, Dorothy traveled to Mexico and actually met Luis's family, half-brothers, cousins, and so forth. They got along splendidly. And in 2008, the Ottawa citizen interviewed Dorothy, and this is what she had to say about her memory of Luis. Those who die in war do not really die. In my dreams, I'm still 16 and he's still 20. Luis Perez Gomez was one of many young men who gave their lives for our freedom, yours and mine. One of the so few we owe so much to, as Winston Churchill said it. I came to Ottawa in search of the story of a young Mexican Spitfire pilot so that he should not go unremembered in his own country. Here in Ottawa, I met Dave O'Malley. Dave has chronicled the lives of many young pilots from the Glebe in his neighborhood of ghosts. We agreed, Dave and I, that Luis Perez Gomez, born in Guadalajara in Mexico, belongs among them. The name of Luis Perez Gomez is inscribed in the Book of Remembrance in the Canadian Parliament and is also engraved in the granite wall at the Commonwealth Air Training Plan Museum in Brandon, in Manitoba. Mexican Eagle, Canadian Wings is the life story of my fellow countryman, Luis Perez Gomez.